Hey, 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 tourist. Whoa, now. You looking a bit rough around the edges. Everything okay? Huh, seems like your conscience is weighing heavy on you. My, my, tourist. You're a real saint for someone who caused that carnage. But let me tell you something. Sometimes to keep your humanity in this messed up world, you gotta embrace the monster within. Let me spin you a tale about a man who did that. A force to be reckoned with, wielding a barbed wire bat. A fella named Negan. Take a can of subscribe and like button stew and enjoy the show. One view will feed my undead pets. Stop fighting me. Bad, bad. In the current state of a walker infested world, the dead are not the greatest threat. The living are. I have been looking forward to this. Although The Walking Dead had its share of beloved protagonists, they've also had their share of interesting antagonists. And out of the antagonists in this series, there was one particular antagonist turned anti-hero that intrigued me, Negan. This in our pants yet? His entry into the TV series blew my mind. Just like what happened with Glenn. Don't come after me. Negan seemed to be the most intimidating and captivating antagonist in this series that many hated to love. He he may have been depraved and cruel, but he was very charismatic and persuasive with his people, building and leading his cult of saviors forming their identity around him. It's very common for people to plunder and pillage for survival in the zombie apocalypse, but Negan had his own motto. In the current state of the world, you earn what you take a sentiment he shares with Dwight later in the season. We do apply this mentality when playing saints and sinners. Why scrounge up leftovers when you can steal from the tower? His way of applying that motto applies to his dealings with communities. He would oppress other communities into working for him and extort resources from them to support the sanctuary. He and the saviors would also build blockades as an intimidation tactic to Rick's group, knowing where they would go, giving them mental pain. The big bad wolf knows how ruthless his methods are to the little pigs inside and outside his community. Little pig, little pig, let me in. Another one of his models was that people are precious resources, which was evident. In his community, he rewards promising behavior and hammers down on people with insubordination. For those who saw the show, he introduced a point system where people slog away for daily necessities. Based on the points they have, they were segregated into hierarchies, as he calls it, an economy. Those that were fortunate to become his subordinates lived like kings alongside him, yet the ones that got to work closely by his side were more bloodthirsty and violent than the rest of the group. Especially Trevor Phillips here. Negan enjoys apocalyptic life but at the expense of others, taking sadistic pleasure in their suffering. He also puts people in their place, punishing them by scarring the men with hot iron, taking their wives as his own, weird, bludgeoning the men in front of their loved ones, or turning them into walkers for his yard. Unlike Rick, he did not have any emotional or social support system, so he takes solace and comfort with the bat he named after his wife, Lucille. He also uses Lucille to inflict bloodshed as a way to quench her thirst. Despite his heinous deeds, he tries to justify them and convinces himself that he is saving others, making them strong. The governor was also a very good villain, as he was a man that witnessed a tragic end to his family, but was insane enough to risk everything for greed, power, and his ego, especially when people stopped believing in him. Yet in grim times, Negan somehow manages to bring out humor in a lot of scenarios with his calm demeanor and a dark undertone, putting everyone around him at unease. He may be a sociopath, but you got to give him credit where it's due. He's got jokes. He takes pleasure in the little things in life, one of them being making others squirm with his off-putting happy attitude and smile. Someone that is this calm in the end of the world is viewed as a huge danger. When he wants to show others that he is a threat, he towers over them, stares at them closely, and calmly threatens them letting the threats marinate in their heads for a bit. His whistle was a way to toy with others, signaling their inevitable fate. Hell, 
He even managed to break Rick's mental state, making him cry like a baby as he's coerced to make Carl right-handed. If he's this cheerful, providing comic relief in such dark situations, then how much of a menace could he be when he's actually angry? There were some scenes in the show where we got to see that side of him, like when Rosita shot Lucille. The last words Abraham and Glenn heard before they died was Negan singing Eeny Meeny Miny Mo." after all. He seems to be a man that indulges in his dark desires, as he lives in a world with no constraints. However, it seems like he has boundaries of his own. He values his mottos dearly, including one where he himself does not kill children. In season 10, he meets Brandon, a savior fanatic who coerces him to become like his old self, but Negan did not tolerate his egging especially after that man slaughtered a woman and a child. Negan also rescues Sasha when one of his men tries to force himself on her. It seems that even Negan has lines that he himself won't cross and has emotional attachment. But because of his mentally ill state, he ups the theatrics having to do horrific things to prove his points, skewed or not. When you think about it, where did this behavior stem from for this kind of man? Just like everyone in The Walking Dead, Negan had a normal life of his own. He was a high school gym teacher who felt a sense of purpose to shape kids to become better functioning members of society, which explains his boundaries to not kill children. After attacking a man who disrespected him and his wife Lucille's favorite song, he lost his job, was instructed to pay visits to his parole officer, trash-talked kids on Xbox, and also had an affair with Lucille's friend. After discovering Lucille had cancer, he broke off the affair and took care of her all the way into the apocalypse as the loving husband she wanted. He was then captured by a biker gang, and after escaping, he encounters a pivotal moment that would break him, his wife's demise tragically by her own hands, out of belief that her husband has abandoned her. It filled him with sorrow, despair, and shame at the inability to come to the truth that he lost his wife. What's even sadder was that she killed herself the day he left to get her treatment, convinced that he was not coming back. This desensitized him into a cruel, callous, and unempathetic shell of a man as a way to shield him from the pain. He eventually took revenge on the biker gang in the same leather jacket gifted by Lucille, indicating the switch in roles from the oppressed to the oppressor. He was definitely not a good person, but unlike the governor, he was not too far gone. He does see the error of his ways even though his acts will never be forgotten by the communities. In the fireplace scene where he bids farewell to Lucille, he admits that he was a coward who chose to take the easy way out. This definitely relates to his experience in The Saviors, where loyalty through intimidation was easier to him than loyalty through altruism and compassion. And this was a huge contrast to when he used to flinch while killing a walker. I couldn't face the pain of losing you, so I ran away. Negan was an example of a weak, simple man who gave into the darkness, but is somewhat retaining a bit of humanity. And in the last few seasons, he was pretty much on our side now, even though it was not voluntary from the beginning. He saved Judith, Lydia twice, took care of Herschel in Maggie's absence, saved Daryl from the Whisperers, and even threw him a weapon when fighting Commonwealth soldiers. He has also gotten the closest to Alpha, the leader of the Whisperers before killing her. He does have a way to get under people's skin. There was a debate among fans on whether he has truly changed, especially after Dead City, where it seems like his old self has returned. To me, there was a very stark difference to how he was from season 9 to 11, then season 7 to 8. It was like he had a wake-up call and was disgusted with his actions despite Loki enjoying them. And he has a wife and kid now as he tries to start over. The later seasons seemed to add more depth to him and made him feel more human. When it comes to a desperate situation like the apocalypse, fear and survival change people drastically, most likely for the worse. I mean, look at me. I played saints and sinners recently, and all I've done was run at every living being with a frying pan. In an apocalypse, it takes one traumatic moment 
to flip that sanity switch off. And Negan's switch was far from switched off. It was ripped off. The world is not black and white, especially in The Walking Dead, where good and bad don't exist anymore. Just survival. Negan has done horrible things as a villain, but he was a great, well-written character to have in The Walking Dead. Possibly the highlight of the show for me. Let's think about this. If Rick and Negan were not in the show, would you still watch it? Would you rather watch a whole season revolving around Maggie? Even if people don't think he's changed, he at least has been very valuable to the community. And if his actions have benefited them, then I don't see a reason for them to keep him around, even if it would take time. It does make sense for the community in Alexandria to be skeptical of him, considering his past history with the people. You see, tourist, we may do what it takes to survive, but that don't make us monsters. Before all this, we had laughs, dreams, and families. And in a world so far gone, we act like a monster to survive day by day. But we're different from the walking dead. And do you know why? We are human with consciousness, hope, guilt, and more. And every step we take, we will reclaim our world together from the dead, one day at a time. So it's okay to feel that way. That is all for today. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to subscribe for more content like this, like the video, and comment your opinions on The Walking Dead or your favorite character and why. Thank you for watching, and that's all. I'll see you next time, tourist. You shattered my family. Thank <laughs> you.